folks, uh, George Kovach. I haven't done a walking rant in a while. Uh, normally it's in my backyard, but this is my other backyard. This is my uh, my office, which is a, a bit of a mess, but it's just the way I love it. Um, I did a, uh, a little mini interview with one of my colleagues yesterday who wrote an article several years ago called uh, uh, Standing in a Canoe. And uh, um, as you might guess by, by the title, um, this was by uh, Dr. Sam Campbell, yes, the uh, infamous Sam Campbell from the uh, massive Epistaxis case. But really what we're talking about is when is it it's safe or appropriate to not follow the rules. And ultimately that's what makes us physicians is that there are going to be algorithms and, and uh, you know, decision rules, etc. But what makes us uh, clinicians and why we get paid what we get paid is is to make decisions at the end of the day, um, and I, I I wanted to use the example of of uh, the difference between uh, gambling and playing the odds, and we might think that they're both the same thing, but but they are different. So, um, gambling in my mind is something that we shouldn't do, and, and gambling is leaving everything to chance. So. Um, I, uh, you know, have a, a case in every case that comes in because I'm good at uh, you doing rapid sequence intubation and not necessarily other methods. Um, I'm just, regardless of what the patient's condition, I'm going to push these drugs and, and give it my best shot. And, and that's, that's, that's gambling because they're, even though you're using your skill, um, that best shot might not be the most appropriate thing for the, for the patient. And that's different than, than playing the odds. And playing the odds, in, in my mind, is okay. In other words, we're, it's really when we're doing it, it's a calculated risk. Um, so the other day, one of my colleagues was up doing a review course, and um, they presented the case of the, the burn patient, and what's the appropriate uh, way of managing this person's airway. And a lot of them wanted to push drugs and, and do a, a rapid sequence intubation. We all know that that's potentially a very safe and a very appropriate uh, um, way to, to manage these patients, um, particularly if it's early before there's any edema. Um, but again, I recognize the fact that if they presented a bit more of an advanced stage or they have any clinical signs of upper airway involvement, um, then uh, that might not be the, the safest thing. So really what we're doing in this situation is, is playing the odds. The patient presents early. It is a burn. But just because it's a burn doesn't mean I, I can't do a rapid sequence intubation. It might mean that I'm going to be a bit more careful. I might do nasopharyngoscopy. I, I, I might do uh, you know some other approach um, and do an awake look and, and decide whether I'm going to push drugs or not. The argument I'm going to make for doing an awake in this situation is because of the paradox that I've talked about before is that we're left um, to uh, do a procedure that we're less comfortable with and is technically more difficult um, in, in, uh, in situations of difficulty. In other words, you know, you've got somebody who is uh, uh, got a penetrating injury to their, their neck. Um, and uh, we decide that it's it's the safest thing to to uh, do uh, an awake approach to this patient. Well, most of us don't do it very often. Don't do awake approaches, and usually these patients are uncooperative. And technically, it's I think it's way more complicated and way more challenging to do than doing a rapid sequence. It doesn't necessarily mean that that's why we should avoid it. It means actually specifically that's why we should seek experience for it. And that's why when somebody presents with a burn, whether they present early or late, I'm always going to do an awake approach in them um, unless for some reason they're not able to tolerate it because I want to get good and, and uh, um, maintain my uh, competence in doing this uh, procedure, the awake um, approach, so that when I need it, and it's definitely indicated that I can do it. And I'm going to finish off with this, is that the only way we get good at, at, uh, at doing things that are high acuity, low opportunity scenarios, or one of the only ways is to overlearn. And the irony is that we don't get opportunities necessarily to overlearn, so we need to create those opportunities. So a bit of a ramble. Um, it's about standing in the canoe. Um, it's okay to do it um, as long as you know why you're doing it. Um, sometimes you need to 
you hear a rumble in the distance, and that rumble in the distance might be some some a rapids, and uh, by standing in it and looking ahead, you can recognize that it represents danger, and you're going to have a different approach. It's okay to play the odds, um, but don't gamble um, in airway management or with your patients' lives. See ya.